What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, the podcast that wastes hours of your life that you will never get back. We are your co-hosts, Spencer, Gabe, and Sam. And today is our annual Halloween episode, if you can't tell. <laughs> what do you mean? I so, dress like this every day. Right, yeah. No, that's just what I wear to bed, guys. <laughs> so last year, we... We read several books. I th- one of them was Stolen Tongues, and then we read two others, I believe. Um, one of them was really good. It was about a witch uh, that was haunting oh, these yes. uh, this yeah. couple. You remember that? That was yeah. such a good book. It wasn't, it wasn't just the couple, though, right? Was, wasn't it the just like certain witch that was around the town, and you could see her, and you'd just have to avoid her route and stuff like that? No, that was, that was another book that, book that we read on the side. Oh, um, okay. the one the one that I'm thinking of is there was these these this couple oh, the that was couple camping that out camping okay yeah. Yeah. yeah and they're and everyone's telling them like hey you don't want to go out to uh the camping spot on this specific weekend like everybody avoids it and they're like whatever mm-hmm. and then they get out there and they get haunted by this <laughs> like really scary like yeah. ghost witch um <laughs> That was that was the first book that I had read because we had we had tried like a bunch of horror books. I was trying to find something that was like legitimately scary and I just couldn't find anything. And it was well before we had read Stolen Tongues. Um, And I remember I found that book and I was like, here we go. Like, this is actually, actually scary. Um, If I can, uh, it when I'm editing this, I'll, I'll put the title of the book somewhere on screen so you guys can see it because it was it was really good um but so we we ended up reading stolen tongues last year and that was kind of our main uh headliner for the show and stolen tongues was excellent i think it made it onto uh it made it into both of our top fives for the year at the end of the year um we just we loved this book so much and so as we got close to this Halloween season, I was like, has Felix Blackwell done anything else? I was thinking maybe we read some of his older works. And when I looked that up, I found out that just like days ago, <laughs> he had released uh, this prequel to Stolen Tongues called Church Beneath the Roots. Um, and it, uh, it happens before the events of Stolen Tongues. And it's not exactly like how all of the things got started, but it's another look into another generation of people dealing with this curse on the mountain. Um, and so I saw that and I was like, we got to read that, right? Like we got to we got to check out the this prequel book. Um, so we've done that. And so what I'm thinking for this episode is we'll start out, we'll, talk about some Halloween and horror stuff, like some of our favorite uh, horror media, whether it be books or movies or TV shows or whatever, or video games. Um, And then we'll talk about uh, Sam, Sam, that way. She just read uh, Stolen Tongues for the first time because she was like, there's no way that I'm going to read a prequel to this Stolen Tongues book without reading Stolen Tongues. Um so we're going to get her thoughts on that. We'll try to keep that spoiler light or spoiler free, spoiler light. Um, and then we will talk about uh, church beneath the roots in a spoiler free way, because I know a lot of our viewers have probably not read it, probably didn't even know that it was out. Cause it's literally like days old, like maybe a couple weeks old or something. Um, it just came out in, in October here. So, um, we'll talk about it in a spoiler free way. And then we're going to give all of you guys a spoiler warning when we go in to talk about full spoilers for both stolen tongues and church beneath the roots. Um, and you know, when I post this to YouTube, I'll have chapter markers down there. So please use those at your discretion. Jump around to whatever, you know, you don't want spoilers for, whatever you do want spoilers for. Um, so please uh, use those. Um, that's what they're That's what they're there for, for you to skip the things that you're not interested in and to go to the things that you are. But uh, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this Halloween episode. Uh, I'm excited to chat with you guys about uh, both these books, but also 
about uh, some Halloween stuff. Do do you guys have any Halloween plans? I've just Absolutely not. Halloween party. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have no? any Halloween plans. I know that Leah wants to get dressed up and go do something, but there's nothing around here to do. Yeah. No, so, no, I... like Halloween party or anything. No, no, we're. Unless you want to go crash a 17-year-old's Halloween party, you know? <laughs> it's probably not a good good time. <laughs> what about what about you, Sam? Are you doing anything? Um, I mean, I have a seven-year-old, so it's pretty much you know always about Cooper or yep. Dan, right? yep. um, yeah. And so we have a party one night, and then we'll do our trick or treating the night of. The only thing that stinks about Halloween is where my house is located. I'm like the last house on the sidewalk. <laughs> Nobody oh, okay. comes to my house for yeah. Halloween. It's no same, one- same for oh. us up here. We don't ever get trick or treaters up here ever. Yeah, I yeah. want them to. I want them to come so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I also like don't decorate, you know, like we don't yeah. do yep. any of that. But one year I and left it's... out a bowl of candy on the front steps and we yeah. have security cameras everywhere around the outside of our house. Yeah. And I sat all night and watched my security. <laughs> oh no. And no one came. So my no. husband ate like five pounds of chocolate in the next oh. <laughs> You know? Dang. So yeah. other than taking uh Cooper to the party is really that's about it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm- and the the decorating is a vicious cycle, right? Because for me, it's like I live on kind of um I'm like off of a main road, but I'm on like very much a side street that you would never go down mm-hmm. unless you lived on it. Um and so I'm kind of like I see all the Halloween decorations and I'm like I would love to decorate, but I'm not going to decorate for no one. And yeah. so it's like but then also is it that because my house isn't all lit up with all these decorations, is that why I'm not getting any That's trick or treaters? <laughs> and so it's like the chicken before the egg, like yeah. which one, like I would hate to yeah. put in all this money and like decorate the house up and then just be sad on Halloween because nobody's coming by. But then also I'm kind of like, my house is really dark. It's like hidden behind some trees. And so maybe if I did something, they would like see it. But also, I don't know. See, so. I don't want to decorate. I had two parents that decorated. My dad would do our lawn for every single holiday. We had all the blow up big mm, of mm-hmm. every holiday. They went out. Yeah. We had the lights. We had mini Christmas trees that went up our full long driveway. Like, And then the inside of the house was decorated. I am the exact opposite. If somebody wanted to do it for me, sure. But I don't, I, no. Yeah. My brain is always like, I'd rather be reading a book or, you know, like right. doing some craft project. I just, I am not a decorator that's (laughs) that's fair that's fair um i i am not a decorator for christmas when when i was young my mom would like go all out for christmas it's her favorite holiday she does like the whole christmas in july thing and um she's wild about it it's 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 kind of made me hate christmas honestly like Mm -hmm. i'm i'm very much the grinch nowadays but um There was a period of time where I think I just needed some sort of creative outlet and I wanted to like find a way to um, bond with my mom over Christmas. And so I was like, I'll do the decorations and I'll go like crazy with it. And so when, when I was young, like literally 13, 14, something like that. I was out there on a ladder and just like stapling lights to the house like crazy. I did all this crazy stuff with lights. And my mom thought that that meant that I wanted to decorate forever. And so then every year she would tell everybody, like even when I was like 17, she's like, Spencer loves decorating. Like he goes (laughs) so far into it. And I'm like, mom, that was like two Christmases where I just needed some sort of outlet um yeah (laughs) yeah. and so then she like expected me to do it every year and so then i started like hating it because then it was expected of me Mm. um and so i feel you on that yeah (laughs) but i would love to decorate for halloween because it's not like you don't need like a ton of lights and stuff really it's more like blow-ups and like 
yeah decorations and stuff you know what you, you would buy. like even more like even more than that though is like just decorate your inside a little bit with some halloween stuff get yeah. it like get a couple You're... you know like you know something to put in front of that tv downstairs like a little happy yeah. halloween thing maybe a pumpkin over here yeah you know, maybe something doesn't have to be a lot but i feel like that still gives you know gives you an, enough of the spirit to be like all right i feel like i'm participating but here, I also don't really want to participate, so... Sure, yeah. <laughs> sure. Here, here's, here's the thing, though, Gabe, is I feel like if I decorate the insides, then I am going to be disappointed if I don't have friends over to see it. Oh. And so I'm like, I, I feel like I'm doing it for no one. Yeah, but also, Well, I, my thought is just do it for you. You don't need to do it for anybody else. Yeah, I'm just not that kind of... <laughs> like I don't care what it looks like, really. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like people that are people that are like uh, even with like fashion and stuff, they're like, "Well, just dress up for you." Just like you, I'm like, I don't care what I look like. If I'm dressing up, I'm dressing to like impress other people. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like but I'm Sam, Sam, if you were a single woman and you went over to a single man's house after a date or something and you saw that the inside of his house was fully decked out in like decorations okay so it would depend on how the date went right here's my thought process because if the date went really well me i would be like oh this is actually kind of great because he's into it and it's something i won't have to do but i would mm. like to have in my home so it would be a great like partner but if he was already weird and then I came to the house and he's a single man with a fully decorated interior of halloween i'd be like oh um my stomach is just <laughs> get my pants i have to go you I know just what don't I mean? yeah i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go home and probably never talk to you again sorry yeah i need to right. save this place <laughs> right yeah exactly sure. I think there's levels you know like there's like sure. that would be weird seeing all out stuff but like even when we lived in in the other side of the state here it was uh, it was kind of cool because we didn't get we didn't get trick-or-treaters but it was fun to have like do carve a pumpkin or two you know and put them out on the sure. on the on the uh, deck and stuff like that i always enjoyed that yeah yeah i like carving yeah. the pumpkins but that gives me like a creative outlet and then yeah. it's just, like an extra benefit to be able to put it out on the front yeah floor, totally. you know <laughs> yeah well i think that's all we need we just like we need creative outlets that we like to put out you know you don't yeah. have to put up lights if you don't want to carve a pumpkin right. or bake some cookies and throw them at children you know whatever you want it, yeah. it doesn't matter yeah yeah it's for sure fun now that i have like a son you know being yeah. older it's definitely a yeah. lot more fun because i get to live like vicariously through him somewhat mm -hmm. but if it wasn't for him man i mean I, I mean there was a year where my husband and i both forgot our wedding anniversary we are <laughs> um <Yeah. laughs> trying to just go with the flow people you know what yeah, i mean that's something right. that i'll definitely do i'm sure yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he grounds us back into reality. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I would I would love to decorate, but I would also just be like, <laughs> I don't know. If I ever had somebody over and they like saw the inside of my house, then it would be like it, it's a it's a double edged sword, right? Because it's like you're decorating, hoping that people see it, but also as a single guy with a dog. <laughs> You know, with just like just me and my dog, it's kind of like people are like mm, kind of kind of going all out for Halloween. All right. Yeah. But. No, you just have to. If you're gonna do it, you just have to do it small for you. You know. Yeah. Get a, get a pumpkin or a candle or something. Right. Well, you, know, right. you could bring home a girl who is equally enthusiastic about Halloween and is like, "Oh my god, I want to marry this man." You won't. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it, it, for me, it would have all depended on how the date went and what my reaction would have been. You know? Sure. That's that's fair. And that's why that's why I, I'm trying to be as clever as I can with all this back here, because <laughs> I'm like, if a girl sees this, she has to be like totally on board <laughs> for the, room, the, the, room for the is fantasy awesome. book shrine. The room yeah. Is awesome. yeah. Yeah. The room yeah. Is superb. Yeah. For sure, yeah. I think Find so. Too. You a partner <laughs> that allows you to take over your spare bedroom and make mm -hmm. it, you know, your That's life. Right. Yeah, you gotta find <laughs> yeah. money that makes more money in you. Yeah. And then you can get a bigger house. Right. The, yeah. The next I, I just feel like I feel like you have to prep the person, right? Yeah. You have to be like, hey, like you're you're gonna see my room and there's gonna be a lot of 
fucking fantasy books and shit like <laughs> it's just, just funny to think about because like i haven't been single for so long that i'm you haven't I, had to think about it well yeah. i've just been in this like fuck it stage for so yeah. long like this yeah. is who i am you know who i am you know who you married like right you know i'm a freak okay and you clearly right. love me for whatever reason sure but it, i have to stop and say but sam when you were single yeah you right done all of the things you do now right <laughs> Yeah, you you have to be you have to be a lot more uh, a lot more careful and guarded yeah. about your your hobbies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay, so let's talk about let's talk about uh, horror stuff. Um, so you guys, I'm not so into horror, but there are some horror things that I really like. You guys are very into horror, right? Very, very. <laughs> so what what are your things when it comes time for spooky season? It's like what what are your go to's that are like either we watch this every year or this is kind of our like niche or whatever? Like what what's your thing? My husband and I are very, very into horror movies. We love horror. I mean, the gorier the better, but we're we love them across the board. Um I would say, I don't want to say like embarrassed of some of my favorites, but they're my favorites, regardless of what people think of them. And I actually thought my one movie was similar in a way to these two books, Stolen Tongues and the uh, Church Under the Beneath the Roots. Um, okay. The Paranormal Activity movies. Mm, yeah. Probably, yep. maybe my favorite movies horror-wise ever. I just, I love the progression, the way they move kind of backwards. And yeah. whatnot. Um, we really love the Saw movies, the Final Destination movies. We're kind of, we like some of the older movies. Um, we just watched a couple really good ones. We watched Speak No Evil, the new James McAvoy movie. Mm. So it's a very slow burn for about an hour of the movie, but it is worth the slow burn. Okay. For the ending. It's one of those movies where depends on how polite of a person you are with how far you would have let it go. You know what I mean? Where you're like, okay. oh, I can excuse this. I can excuse that until it gets to a point where you're like, okay, I can't excuse like what's happening anymore. Something's wrong. Is it, so, is it scary or is it like thriller? Um, I would say it's closer to thriller, but it gets very gory and gruesome oh, okay. at the end. It definitely does. And then um, we watch Cadeau Lake on HBO the other day. Okay. And that one, that one was really, really good, but it almost had a sci-fi twist to it. So I would highly recommend the two of you watch it because I was very surprised at what the outcome was in the movie. Okay. But yeah, we, we love horror, but um, this was probably one of the first times I've read a, a horror book. We read a lot of thriller. I've read a lot of thrillers, not really specifically horror. Yeah. Um, but these books reminded me in a lot of ways of my favorite horror movies, Paranorm Paranormal Activity. So I um, I did enjoy them. But yeah, okay. we, we like the gory, gruesome stuff, you know, like the Saw movies, that type of stuff. They're, they're probably the top of the list for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pa the Paranormal Activity movies, um, they definitely weren't like the first movies that really scared me. But I remember... <laughs> I was probably 16 when they came out, maybe 17. Mm -hmm. And when that first one came out and nobody knew if it was like real or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh my God, that was terrifying. I remember me and my friend, uh, Sean, and I went and saw it. And I remember obviously I was living at my mom's house <clears throat> and we went and saw this movie and I think we like rode our bikes to the movie theater or like rode our skateboards or something. And we saw this movie and it scared the ever living shit out of us. And we were just like, what do we do with <laughs> Hey Nova? Um, <laughs> I was just like, I was like, what, what do we do with the information? from this movie that we just saw we're talking about a paranormal activity spacey nova the first the first one um and uh we were like terrified the whole way home because it was like dark and in order to get from the theater to my house there was like 
by far the shortest way was to go through the woods mm -hmm. and we it was just like terrifying and we got back to my mom's place and i was like hey are you down to just like crash here and he's like yeah totally <laughs> and we just like both crashed in my room because we yeah. were like we were scared shitless like that movie was was insane um, yeah, Michael and I love found footage movies. They're our favorite genre of horror. And I, I think it's because it feels real. You feel yeah, like yeah. you're watching found footage. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that Sam, can you watch a, project... can you watch um uh foreign found footage films? Like something that's oh, not I would in... absolutely watch a, a foreign found footage film. Okay, because I've got a movie for you that was made in Thailand that is by far the best found footage film I've ever seen. Okay, please. Or was. Please. It's, it's called, it's called, in, it's called chat. yeah, it's called incantation, but I'll, incantation? I'll text you. Chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we really love found footage. We recently watched one called this hell house and it's about this group of friends who travel around the United States and set up haunted houses every halloween in these different towns oh yeah 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 i've seen it yeah and in oh. the one we watched the first one there it's this like house that a bunch of murders had happened in and crazy stuff starts happening but the whole house is decorated like a haunted house it is oh. so good wow <laughs> But is I this like a wait is this like a dramatized like movie or is this like a documentary type um, it's like a documentary type. It's definitely found footage. It's them like filming themselves preparing the haunted house for the season. But it's um, like, but it's like a movie. It's not like it's like acted. It's acted. It's absolutely oh, okay. acted. Oh, but okay. it's the whole time you're watching it through either somebody holding their camcorder or like the security cameras. Yeah, it's very much like Blair Witch style. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's my favorite. It makes you feel like it's real. Where yeah. Have you seen the VHS it's... films? No, I haven't. Okay, I'm pretty sure they're on Netflix now. Watch the VHS films. Okay. Phenomenal horror. Okay. It's a bunch of like little clips clipped together. Yeah. And each one is like a, a crazy found footage film. Oh, so good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you nice. watched the have you watched the 20 minute horror stories on Netflix? No, I haven't even heard of that game. Yeah, it's either Netflix or, or one of those, but they've been out for a little while, but they're, it's basically a series where each each episode is a different 20-minute horror story. Are you okay. thinking of, is it called 20-minute horror stories? I think so, yeah. It's something it's minute has, horror yeah. stories. Or like, I, I remember two cabinet. Sentence, two sentence, that's it. That's oh, okay. It. But, they're, but each episode is like its own little short horror movie. Oh, cool. uh, Some of them are better than others, but it was it was a cool watch. That that reminds me of like Cabinet of Curiosities. <laughs> yeah, same same exact thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I liked I liked that. Yeah. Well, that's did you know these books, the Stolen Tongues books, <laughs> came from him starting like a writing prompt on Reddit? Really? Yeah, I found that out when I was looking it up to order the books. That it started out as like a series on Reddit. Oh hmm. shit, that's cool. Yeah. Dang. Oh, and PSA to anyone listening: Stolen Tongues is free on Audible. Ooh, interesting. That is a great free when we were listening. Yeah, I know. I wish I wish yeah. Because <laughs> I ended up listening to the second <laughs> book, but I had I had started the first book. I was gonna do audio and I saw it was free. So the first book is free. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, That's guys, cool. go check out <laughs> Stolen Tongues if it's free, especially. Uh Nova says the first movie that terrified me was Sphere. My friend's dad took us when I was like eight. Have either of you guys heard of this movie? Sphere? Never heard of Sphere. Yeah. Okay. But I will say that eight is a little young to be going to the theaters for a horror movie. I know. Yeah, that's terrifying. That's I think, scary. I, think I was the... probably like 13 or 14, my first like real big horror movie in the theater really? that I watched. Yeah. yeah. No, Spacey, my, my father also... Or... My father let me watch lots of horror films at a very young age. One of my first memories is, I don't know if it's really horror, but The Sixth Sense. I remember- I was going to say this. Dude, <laughs> my mom- my mom took me to this when I was about, I think I was like six or seven or something. And uh, we were on a Disney cruise and she- um, 
they for whatever reason they were playing the sixth sense and for whatever reason my mom thought that was a good idea <laughs> and it scared the piss out of me at that age i'm sure it'd be fine now but it scared oh man it scared me so bad we had to leave the theater really, really? Oh, yeah. yeah i've loved it since a child i was never like oh i can't do this i was like give me more please <laughs> um um for me with the uh so so paranormal activity was one that i i really loved i, I can't say I definitely haven't seen them all. I've seen like two or three of them, I think. I saw them all and they fall off towards the end. It gets yeah. a little convoluted where you're like, wait, what? But in the fourth or fifth movie, there's something that happens where your mind is blown. Your mind oh, really? is absolutely blown. <laughs> really? Okay. I want to say it's the one that it has some sort of like day of the dead mexican theme to it there it's Whoa. like dia de los muertos yes and that one has a callback to the first movie in a way oh. that blew my mind <laughs> oh wow that's super cool i might yeah. have to do a rewatch yeah <clears throat> nova says uh dude six cents made me afraid <laughs> to take cold showers because in the movie they said when it's cold they're angry <laughs> <laughs> nothing like a little light childhood trauma right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude i dude i had some childhood trauma from uh my so we watched six cents um my mom's really into horror movies so she's always kind of had them on to some extent i would like pop in for some of it and then like dip out of the room or whatever. <clears throat> but um, I remember one yeah. or back to back, she made me sit down on the couch and watch the entire way through of uh, the ring and oh. the grudge. And wow. I was probably like 12. I was like 12 or 13. That's, that's, that's hardcore. Yeah. 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 And, gnarly movies, dude. Dude, the ring scared the shit out of me, obviously. Like, yeah. just the whole, like, climbing out of the TV. Dude, I couldn't walk past a TV <laughs> for so long. Like, because, like, you know, it's the old CRT TVs, yeah, like the old real. box like TVs. The, big, the last and, ones that weigh a thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah and, and that's what we had. That, yeah, yeah, that's what we had. Yep. And so I, I just remember, like, late at night, I was like, dude, I just can't walk past that tv i just can't do it um and then the grudge was terrifying like i still like to this day to this day i still get really weird about opening like the attic hatches and like i and and i i have to do it for work all the time <laughs> and so like it Oh god, that scene <laughs> just like terrified me. Where she walks in the yeah. yeah. And she like she's like going, she's like in her closet and like she like pulls like clothes and there's like the head there and then she like closes it and then at some point she opens like the attic hatch and it's just there like creeping over the it's like oh my god. Or what oh, about, do you guys like the Conjuring movies? Those are some of, I, I just realized, yeah. my favorite horror movies. I can't yeah, watch them. I Conjuring? Can't. Conjuring? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, me, that's that's Leah's favorite. favorite. Those, so the Conjuring funny. and then the Smile movies are by far her favorite horror movies right now. I want to yeah, watch Smile. Watch those. So I've, you should I've watch Smile Smile's and you good. should watch Smile 2 as well because it's out now. Um, But yeah, Smile's good. Spencer, I don't... Just watch it. Yeah, okay. I, I I think I'd you be try down. It? Okay, I think I'd be down. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's a little fucking scary. Okay, it's a little is it? Yeah. I, I can't it's think of scary. like what would be scary about Mara. it. Mara, oh I love. Oh that. yeah, just yeah. I, you trust me. There's there's some scary stuff. It's not it's not like The Conjuring, right? We're not summoning demons and devils. And right. Stuff. It's quite a bit different than that. But there's some times where you're like, oh my god, my this is. <laughs> yeah okay okay maybe i'll watch it uh when i come up for christmas yeah you. that'd be cool um no but i i've given her so much shit about this i'm like how how could you name a kid samara <laughs> that would be <laughs> i couldn't oh well they would have a really sweet nickname sam just like sam right yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
Samara's <laughs> Samara's ring is also in a different uh, in a series that we've read too. Spencer. Samara's really? ring. Mm -hmm. Will White. Really? The, I read yeah. something the other day that had a Sabatha in it or a Sabatha in it. Why am I? Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the the series, but like the the Will White series that we that I freaking love. I can't remember the name. Cradle. Cradle. Thank you. Yeah, Samara's ring. Cradle. Oh wow, interesting. That's funny. So for me, the ones the the horror movies and things that I actually is like. A hot dog costume right now. He is. Did you see him? <laughs> I just yep. saw, Stop I just saw it. some hot dog, hot dog costume. Hot dog <laughs> He's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a little hot dog. I can't get over how similar our dogs look, Spencer. <laughs> They're like twins. Yeah. See, um, Spacey, me and Gabe are on your side. We're we've got. <laughs> yeah, I like Samara. I like the name Samara. <laughs> me too. I'm just saying, I would I would be so mad if I was named Samara. I'd I be pretty pissed. Cool. It's remember. a cool name, dude. I don't even know if I've ever met anybody named Samara, and I feel like I should have because that's a cool name. That'd be yeah. saying like anybody named Carrie like should be ashamed because one of the biggest horror books and movies is you know no S yeah. Samara Samara is like really specific though like everybody <laughs> knows what Samara is like they and, might as well have named him Lucifer or something is what you're right yeah to say. exactly exactly <laughs> yes Nova says my daughter's mad I didn't name her Samara That's oh awesome. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, my, uh, uh, Gabe and, and, and my friend, uh, David, um, he used to live back in California, like in Hollywood. And he would go to all of these like parties with like actors and stuff. It was just like normal. And he made out with the chick that played Samara. He had really? no idea. Yeah. He had no idea that she, uh, that she was Samara at the time. And then one of his friends told him later, like, oh, you know, that was yeah. Samara from the ring. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yep. It sounds it sounds far fetched. But if you were to ever meet David, you'd be like, yeah. OK, no, it's completely that's something completely in his wheelhouse. Yeah, for been sure. Yeah. Completely <laughs> normal for him to meet, uh, you know, very famous actress, not know who she is, kiss her a bunch and then leave. Like, that yeah. sounds like a David thing to do. <laughs> very much. Very much. Well, me and my friends went twice i think when i was in college in rhode island and there was this place called the lad school and it was an abandoned um insane asylum that had been abandoned for years and years and years and we went i believe twice to to break in and view it and it has this one building you guys and we went at night which is terrifying you know like thing to do it at night versus during yeah. the day it has one building that is perfectly circular okay creepy on its own but when you yeah. see it at night and you got your flashlights and you're looking up at it oh my god even creepier and we broke in and i remember one specific time this is why i can't remember i think we did it twice because when i was leaving the school i was like they were like, what do you want to do for your last time? And I was like, can we go back to the insane asylum? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I had friends that were just as crazy as me. Like, yeah, let's do it. And I'll never forget, we somehow got separated. And some people were on the roof of the lad school. And some of us were on the ground. And all of a sudden, security showed up. Oh, no. And so we tried to scatter and run. But Ooh, it was- then really you're on your own? It, there, No, there was like eight of us. It was like a big group of us. Oh, and Okay. The snow had melted, but then refrozen, so it was icy. And so mm. we all just ran, <laughs> falling on our asses on sheets of ice. Oh, we no. lost one of our friends. We found her later in a bush, half a mile away. <laughs> and then we had three friends that were up on the roof that couldn't yeah. get away as quickly as we were. It was such oh, a shame. No. But it was, I, I love that. Like, I, yeah. I want to go. I want to, I want to feel the terror. <laughs> I do. I really That's do. That's crazy. I could never. I could never go to like an insane asylum or something. Oh, uh, Nova. Guess know. what? While I was at Spencer's house a little while ago, uh, I got him to start watching asylum? From. From. Yes, I did. Finally, I did I start him, watching From. I made yeah. him power through like the first like four or five episodes of season one. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get. <laughs> I gotta get MGM Plus so I can watch the rest of it because it was really, really, really good. Or just log into mine. Oh did yeah, I guess I could do that too. You said. 
<laughs> yeah, she's like Sam just casually going to an insane asylum for fun. Uh, so you know, so, what do you think? What do you think of From Spence? I liked From a lot. Um, I think it it reminds me a lot of like the early days of Lost. Um, Ooh, just everybody trying movies. just trying to figure out like why they're there. Have you watched this, Sam? From no, but I just I'm looking it up right now. Oh, so it's amazing! Good. It's got like I'm... a it's got like a perfect 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Is this a like, show or a movie? A it's show. a show. It's very, Ooh. very, very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. We're, we're awesome. very much in a horror mood in our household lately, which is why we watched two alone last night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will take any suggestions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd love it. Um, okay, so to, to wrap mine up real quick, my horror things are I love Alan Wake. Alan Wake is like one of my favorite like video game. I mean, there's only two games, so I don't know if you could call it a series, but like it's a franchise. Yeah, like yeah. they're they're so oh, good. Shit. Uh they're really scary, especially God, if you yeah. like play it without like turning on the lights. I wouldn't say it's like as scary as like I don't know, like the Resident Evil games or like something like that, but they're pretty you definitely get jump scares, especially with the second one. The jump scares like take up your entire screen um, and will scare the shit out of you. Um, but so oh, there's that. Or again. No. It's okay. Just. You know what's funny? I can't do scary video games, but I can physically go into scary places. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's interesting that you're not like a a horror game person. They terrify me. I don't know what it is about the game, but the game terrifies me. <laughs> oh wow, that's funny. Yeah, for, for me, I I can't I can't play horror games like at all. Like literally no. Alan Alan Wake is the only one that I I give that's the crazy. chance because the story is so good. Um but yeah, so Alan Wake, and then I love, um, I haven't seen, I think the two most recent ones, and I haven't seen the show, but the Purge movies, I love those. I love, and the show is phenomenal as Is well. it? I've seen is it? all of the Purge things, that's another one, I'm surprised I didn't mention it. Um, my husband and I used to go to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal every year, yeah. and we always bought the VIP Fast Passes to go through all the horror houses and the purge was probably the best one. Oh, there's a purge haunted house oh they would have about like i would say maybe like eight different haunted houses for you to walk through at horror fest and if you didn't get the fast pass you were waiting at least an hour an hour and a half to go through any singular one but if you paid just it wasn't that much more to get the fast pass you could get all of them done in like three hours you know okay and they had What's that like werewolf in London one? They had purge. They had. So what What happens in the purge house? The purge house is was like a bunch of like rich people trying to chase you and murder you, essentially. OK, and you, you have know? to like physically escape them or they can't touch you. It's very PG in the sense of that, like they can't touch you. They can't really just physically touch you but there there was a couple that i remember that have stuck with me where I forget what movie it was but you're walking through a chapel and the oh. pews are set up and there's shrouds over like four or five different bodies and you can't oh, tell fuck. which one is like a real person and which is just like fake bodies set up to like scare the crap out of you um I love it. I'm the type who runs through and just swears the whole time while my husband laughs because he just thinks it's all hilarious. <laughs> really? Interesting. Well, I'm, a, I'm a scared swearer. I, I definitely am terrified the whole time I'm doing it. I would be too, yeah. I love it. I love See, it. See, that's, that's funny because I, I would have like a total breakdown. Like I would not be able to do it at all. It makes no sense to me why I love it. But it's one of the few things that I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to question it. I love it. It's weird. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Didn't you just go to a haunted house? No. Oh, I thought me. you were asking Gabe about that before. No. No. Have you ever done any haunted houses? Uh-uh. 
Oh, I've done so many. Really? Yeah. I like being scared. I like, I feel like it's something that doesn't happen to me on a day-to-day basis ever. So yeah, it's just kind of, yes, Spacey, adrenaline. It's it's an adrenaline junkie rush. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just, um, yeah, it just, it's never like sounded fun to me in the slightest. Really? The, the Purge one like might be interesting though. I just don't, I just don't know how that would be scary if you're just like walking through hallways and they're like coming out of doors, but they can't like, like touch it, you. That's it up. It's hard to explain, but they did do, I just remembered a stage show in the middle, middle of Horror Fest where... They had a purge, uh, like game show going on. You oh, know what interesting! I mean? like a kind of wheel of fortune type of purge show, and it was interactive. And they came out into the audience, and like that was really fun. And they sold the Jello shot blood pouches, like the IV bags full of yeah, what looked like blood, but it was just Jello shot. <laughs> right, right, right. It was it was just a really fun time all around. Oh. American Horror Story. That's the one yes. that I got the shirt from where it's the clown season who I actually met the actor who played the clown from that American Horror Story season. He came into the bar that I worked at in Philly back in the day. Okay. Um, but they they pick all the different horrors of the year and, and set it up. We haven't been able to go since our son was born, but I miss it, man. It was an adrenaline rush. Okay. Interesting. That's cool. It's really fun. Nova says, she says she loved that series. Uh, she also says, there's a place that have no, no boo necklaces. So they won't jump scare you. Interesting. But isn't that like the point of all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you have I a think... heart condition, I could understand like, sure. no, boo scare me. I mean, actually, I think my husband has a heart condition, so maybe he should have one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think for me, I think for me, I would just, I would need to work my way up, but there's no way to know, like, is this haunted house, like, really, really scary? Or is it, like, like a tame haunted house? Or, like, because I wouldn't be able to do the chapel one. There's no way. So there was a documentary out recently, and you know me, I love my documentaries, uh, that Mm. recently followed the, um... The haunted house but it's the one where they can do whatever they want and you have to sign a waiver to say like you will not sue them and they will shave your head throw you in the bathtub with a cage over your head have you seen that well or heard of it at least no you i think you would actually like this spencer because mckay manor mckay manor yes and this guy <laughs> gets people to like sign away their rights beforehand saying that like you can't quit you can't leave it is one of the best documentaries i've ever seen in my life and what what does he do exactly like he can actually like hurt people or oh he will throw you in a like drainage pipe in the ground with cold water running at you and people coming at you or they'll try to drown you or they'll shave your head or you'll be vomiting and they still will not let up they'll throw you in a pit essentially think of a horror film and this guy got people who like me say oh i love horror films this is great and people are like oh well i want a haunted house that actually scares me so he made them Wow. But he, I think he's secretly a sadist and yeah, like for sure. off on this because oh, for these, sure. the people that have done it and came out of it are actually traumatized for life and not because they were scared, just yeah. because of the trauma this guy put them through. I bet, yeah. It's horrific, but you should watch the documentary. He says that no one can last like six hours, but he gets people. Yes. He, he, his whole thing is like, how far can he push you? Wow. It, it was yeah. a great documentary. Yeah. That's definitely, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it, no, he most definitely is. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's not a, that's not a family man for sure. Like, <laughs> no. but it's so interesting. Cause I had heard for years about this 
haunted house where if you actually wanted to be scared and feel like your life was at stake, like yeah. this is what you do, which never appealed to me in any way. I'm like, no, no. Like, the best part of a haunted house to me is knowing that like, it's not real. I'm okay. I can get through this. Right. I don't want you to make my mind think this is real that that's not fun no thank you <laughs> yeah exactly there people out there who want to do it and the things he put them through is horrific yeah yeah that's yeah. that's terrifying not real <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay so other other horror movies and stuff i think there's i mean honestly there's really not many that i i super enjoy wait what'd she say here i heard he was in the military and used yes. his torture tactics he would waterboard people and it was it's just one of those things like go watch just go watch because what's the documentary be... mckay manor is that I what think it's called it's mckay manor it's on Hulu. It's called Monster Inside, America's Most Extreme Haunted House. I'm going to screenshot it and send you... Uh, okay. Link. Okay, so the only other one that I can think of in recent memory that I really enjoyed was Barbarian. Have you seen this? <gasps> I like Barbarian. Have I seen Barbarian? <laughs> I mean, that one had me on the edge of my seat. Yeah. The... <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for anyone who watches this or whatever, but like the the um, breastfeeding moment mm -hmm. was was quite a horrific moment. Yeah, um, and it only got worse and worse and worse. Yeah, uh, I loved Barbarian. I loved I, it. I just love how it like it like leads you into thinking that it's going to be one thing and then it totally flips it on its head mm -hmm. and it's like a totally other thing. And then there's kind of like another like couple twists, like as you get close to the end where it's like, even then what you thought was happening isn't quite what yeah. is actually happening. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was, was great. that was really like good. Justin Long, like random cameo thrown in at the end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was interesting too. Yeah. It reminded me of a way, now that I think about it, of Speak No Evil, where in the beginning, your alarm bells are ringing, but not enough that you're like, I need to get out of here. Right. But it slowly pushes you more and more to the point where you're like, I need to get out of here. I should have listened to my instincts right away. <laughs> like, this is not right. <laughs> Right, exactly, yeah. Oh, he's back! Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, Gabe, we were, we were just wrapping up the uh, the horror media segment. Mm -hmm. um, so the the other thing that I really enjoy that Gabe also really enjoys is the Dark Picture Anthology games. Yeah. Um, like Until Dawn, uh, Man of Medan. Yep. There's there's a bunch of them. We Corey, just played the Cory yeah, when yeah. he was here. Um, and Sam, if you haven't heard of these, these are like a narrative, almost like a choose your own adventure kind of thing. Oh. Like you you make you make decisions based <clears throat> on what you think the group should do or what you think a character should do, and you like pick your dialogue and all this stuff. And every decision has like massive consequences across the entire game so even like picking the wrong dialogue option could lead somebody like you know if you get to a y in the road and you're like and you're one character and you say you go left i'll go right it might be that your character would have survived the left path but this character needed to go right and like and you you only find out like way way later so there's no way to like game the system unless you're doing like a guide like a like for the quarry gabe and i just wanted like a perfect playthrough so we were using yeah. a guide um but if you don't have one there's no way to like there's no way to like make yourself win because none of yeah. the options seem like good ones and like like there was one one of my favorite options that obviously we were using the guide for it, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, Gabe and I were at the top of this like tower and there was the monster and it was like coming up the stairs to get to the top of the tower and we're out on the balcony and there's a zip line and there's a pulley that pulls the zip line back and it was like you can either 
pull the zip line back slowly to try to be quieter, or you can try to pull it back really fast to get to it faster. But mm. even if you do it quietly, it's still like creaking and still making noise. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what's the right option? And it, and it, it's, <laughs> it's all like uh, timed. Uh, yeah. Nova says she loves those games. We got to play that with her. Yeah, that'd be so much be fun. Awesome. It reminds me of, uh, what was it called? LA Noir, where you're yes. like the detective. Yeah. And yeah. It's similar. Yeah. yeah. Similar, cool, but like horror. <laughs> cause, yeah. Cause you guys, you have a PS5, right? Or your husband does. Somebody yeah. does in the yeah. family. Oh, I play it probably the most out of yeah. everyone in my family. And so like <laughs> the coolest, the coolest part about these anthologies that, that, the dark picture anthologies is that they there's they have this couch co-op mode where you each you know you share one controller and you're next to each other on the couch and you each get like four characters right yeah half you each and half pick of the a character characters. and so it'll be like all right character one you're up you pass it to character one and he'll do his yeah. part and you don't say anything see what happens and then all of a sudden next you're up and you're like oh shit now i gotta you know i gotta do my thing and see what to do switches back to character one yep. and, you know it's it's just really it's, cool back and it, forth it's such a great experience because you and your couch co-op person are talking together throughout all of this. Like, what do we do? And like, sometimes yeah, like, I... like it's, it. there's some actions that are timed. And so this thing is going down. It's like, do we go slower? Do we go fast? Like, like oh man, <laughs> yeah. you, you and your husband should absolutely yeah, play these. They're not, like, hey, if we, if we I can play game. them, you can play them for sure. Yeah. We've been looking for a new game and we are, hard up for more than one player games we yes. we've found it very hard to find anything that's more than a single player game yeah i would well, i would download the quarry you can get yeah, it on the, the PlayStation network right now for like really cheap it's like yeah or, or we have the PlayStation until description. nice yeah uh, until dawn also just had a remaster that oh, came okay out. yeah that one would be really good and so until dawn is until like the dawn. original one that i, I think is yeah, that's the, best, the first one that we ever played yeah <laughs> But yeah, you should play those, Sam. That yeah, sounds really sure. great. We we have needed new games. Nice, uh, Gabe. Before we uh, go into our our talk about the book, what uh, what's what's your favorite horror movie? Uh, so right now it's probably Long Legs, and okay. then Smile. Nice. I love uh, Long Legs. Yeah, Long Legs uh, is a really good movie, dude. It's a really my good husband movie. did not love it. He didn't hate it, but he didn't love it. And I <laughs> yeah. was like, this is one of the best movies I've seen. Yeah, like, it's definitely an acquired taste. And I think the reason why I liked it so much is because of like the the games that we play, like uh, like The Quarry or whatever that other yeah. one was. Because it's very much like you're kind of this, you know, you're this person that's been touched by evil a long time ago, but you didn't really know it. Yeah. And now that you're an adult, you're trying, you know, you're an FBI agent, you're trying to figure this stuff out, not realizing that you've already been involved in this for a long time. We do, you didn't know, yeah. you know, so it's okay. just, just crazy, massive. I would know. I like it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you would like it. It, it. It's not scary, dude. It's not, it's okay. not like a jump in your face, scary movie at all. Okay. It's, but it's very much a very visceral experience mm -hmm. okay. like it's it's the kind of thing where you're you know you might understand something at one point and your heart's not going to stop for a while because it's like it's crazy the levels right. that they play at but it's not it's not like jump out your face scary i think you'd like it okay cool and nick cage yeah. is phenomenal nick cage like, is awesome oh nick cage is in it that's funny nicholas cage is the bad guy and you only see him a couple times but god he's such a good actor oh, dude there's some stuff, stuff that he does there's even the scene where, like where the the girl that's our main character, I guess, like meets this person in a jail cell. He gets caught. Uh, and there was this, they, while filming, they put a heart monitor on her because they wanted to see how visceral it was for her. Oh. And, uh, and this was in their theaters, like in, in every like advertisement they had, this was one of the main things. Like, you know, we put a heart monitor on our actress. Uh, this is the first time for very first time her seeing Nick Cage as the bad guys. It's the first scene she's in him with or whatever. And uh, her heart went from like 80 to like 190 beats per Whoa. minute, just violently terrified. And, and even the actress was like, "Dude, this is the most visceral thing I've ever felt." Yeah, like Dang. it was horrifying. Yeah, that's wild. It, yeah, it's, it's that's a great wild. movie. I I loved it when it was done. I was like, "That was amazing." Yeah, it's a good movie. <laughs> okay, yeah. When I when I come out for Christmas, we'll watch Long Legs and Yeah, we'll have uh, to watch that and Smile. Yeah, and, and smile, smile too, also. A smile. There's a second smile. Smile too. It came out in theaters. Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. I need to watch them. Okay, 
So we are going to talk real quick, really <clears throat> quickly about uh, Stolen Tongues because you've just read this, Sam. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to try not to go in too deep into spoilers because we do have a spoiler section coming up. Um, but I, I just, I was so happy when you texted the group the other day <laughs> and you were like, Hey, like I've been reading stolen tongues because I didn't want to read, uh, church beneath the roots without reading it. Um, and I was like, yes, this is what I wanted all along. Um, so yeah. What did, what'd you think? I mean, I texted you guys and was like, I'm loving this. Like, this mm -hmm. is phenomenal. If I am. And a lot of it, I think, reminded me in a way of paranormal activity and reading book two only fully solidified for me that I was like, OK, I think I like this because it's kind of in the same vein where mm. you read about this one story and then you go backwards to find out what led up to this, essentially, even though you don't get the main answer to what you're looking for you know what mm -hmm. i mean yeah, There's yeah. No, like this is why all of this is happening but you get kind of the lead up to it the yeah the only issue i had with stolen tongues was that i loved that book i tore through it i read mm -hmm. 200 yeah. of the 300 pages in like three A hours day, right yeah I just, I just sat down i blew through it i couldn't stop yeah the ending disappointed me so much mm, no way really that it was so hard for me to start the i listened to the audiobook for beneath the root church beneath the roots this morning today it, it it was one of those ones where i was like i had such high hopes and then the ending it felt like it led up to so much in stolen tongues and then it just ended and i was like you gave me no explanation no nothing that I was kind of disappointed. So I was very grateful to have the second book that was a prequel immediately yeah. available to me. Right. But it made it really hard for me to go into it because I felt so let down at the end of the first book. Wow. <laughs> when when we that that's like the exact opposite experience we had. You, yeah. You, when we get into spoilers, you'll have to tell me like yeah. what specifically, because I can't. I can't quite remember exactly how it ends, but I remember being, I remember being very satisfied. With yeah, the I, I thought I was also very happy with the ending. The, too. For yeah. me, the church gave me. Oh, you have the actual book. Oh, I have both of them. Oh, I no way. <laughs> Are they in hardcover? <laughs> Are they paperback or hardcover? Paperback. They're all paperback. Okay. okay. Um, but book two made up for all or the prequel but book two you know made up for all of that it gave me what i felt i was missing from stolen okay. tongues because i love stolen tongues and while the ending was great i just i needed a little more and i feel like church beneath the roots gave me everything that my brain felt i was missing in the first book it gave me all of it i loved it Okay, cool. So let's let's talk spoiler free about Church Beneath the Roots then, because I I think this this is an excellent follow up to Stolen Tongues, um, because I think I think and I don't know if I speak for you, Gabe, but I, I think I read Stolen Tongues and just assumed that was it like that. Like it was just this one off. I didn't expect this to be like a series or anything yeah. like that. Um and so to get a prequel, a, you know, just by itself was a very happy surprise. Um, but then also to get some more information on like the the thing that's going on with the mountain and to see what it was like years prior, because you kind of hear about these things going on on the mountain like in stolen tongues you hear about these things that happened in the past and you know people don't live at the top of the mountain anymore they all live down in the city and it's kind of like okay well why'd they move down there and you kind of find out in stolen tongues but then to see it in the prequel is like oh this is cool and i think i think my takeaway from from uh church beneath the roots was like for me i i'm like and I don't think this is from like a writing perspective or anything. I think this is a very um, just a me 
<laughs> opinion thing. Um, I I think it for me it probably wasn't as good as Stolen Tongues, I but it was still totally amazing. Like I still yeah. loved it. I think I preferred Church Beneath the Roots. Really? Yeah, I would say okay. I'm the I'm the probably the far far other way than you guys. I didn't definitely did not like this butch anywhere near. Really? Really interesting. I this gave me all the answers that I was missing. It yeah. very much again reminded me of Paranormal Activity, where once I walked watched the second movie, everything from the first movie made so much more sense. Yeah, me. I mean there huh. are like there's like. From what I understand, and again, I had a lot of problem with all the names. The names really confused me. Every single one of them could never okay. Couldn't know who was who. There's the names are crazy, which I understand. Uh, but there's only like one or two times where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that that connects. And everything else was just kind of its own, like, you know, oh, little horror story. Yeah. Maybe because I read them back to back. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been like you know eight so nine fresh. months since we've read the last one, right? Since I've read. The other one, uh, but, but I, I, just, just, I remember being a lot more enamored with Stolen Tongues than I was this book. This book, there was times where I was reading it. I was like, okay, I, I have no idea what's happening. I'll just hang out, see what happens next. And then huh. eventually something would start happening that I was like, okay, I can follow that. Yeah, I know what's going on. And then all of a sudden, next thing I know, there's four new people that I don't know who they are. I don't know why they're there. I don't know what's going on. You know what I think it is, is Stolen Tongues was immediately horror, 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 yeah. horror, horror through the whole book. Yeah. Where Church Beneath the Roots is really just giving you kind of what led up to it. Yeah. And it didn't have the horror until the end. But I think yeah. the reason I enjoyed yeah. it more is just because it gave me those answers I was looking for sure. from Stolen Tongues. Yeah, fair. That's fair. Yeah, I think uh, to to Gabe's point, I do. There, there was definitely times where I was like, "Who is this character again?" Um, and I think there was just like a lot of characters. Yeah, in this it just little I got book. so confused. It was yeah, yeah. it was like this book was like you know seven hours long, and like there's like sixty characters in it. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, how do I manage this? I don't there, know what. Like there, there was were, like the dog, like whatever the yeah. dog's name was, I could follow that dog perfectly. I knew it was a dog, right? Easy. Sure. <laughs> I got that down. But then you got like you know four other people with names similar to the dog. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Like I just right. don't know what's happening. I audio booked Church Beneath the Roots, and I will admit that in the beginning <laughs> I was very confused, and then I was like, oh, this woman he's talking to is actually his dog the whole time <laughs> yeah yeah i knew the dog from when he when he knew me when he brought knew me up yeah. i think it's the yeah. dog's name um and yeah the dude honestly like forgive me god but those those are my favorite part of the books was with the dog <laughs> yeah i Easy understand it it was all awesome i knew what was going on even the sad <laughs> parts there was a part that tore my heart out yeah with the dog that was just horrifying but like they're yeah. still my favorite parts probably yeah yeah i think I, I think the book, because it's trying to show you like an entire town and how all of these people connect together. And I, I can see why that would be like, man, there is a lot going on. Cause he, even I was kind of like, there's kind of a lot going on. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I don't think I had as much of an issue with all the names, but I do think there, there was a lot of characters. There was a lot of characters for a seven-hour audiobook, for and sure. And not only that, it was the names of the characters that screwed me up, dude. It's like Volf, Onwe, Akintha, On, you know, like just a bunch of crazy names. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Jim, Jeff, Blake, you know, Tim. <laughs> I can follow all those just fine. Mm -hmm. okay? See, that's like, funny. I, can... I had I had the opposite problem where I, I, I would hear the Native American names, and yeah. I would be like, okay – this is distinct enough. I know who this character is. But then when they got into like, I was like, who the fuck is John? I was <laughs> yeah. like, just yeah. like all these like super average names. Like I knew who Luke was. Yeah. But like Luke, near, Luke near easy, the yeah. end, near the end, there was like John, Jack and Isaac or something that there, I'm not going to spoil anything, but yeah. there was a big event at the end. And like whatever there's like these three like very like basic american names and i was like i do not know who these characters at Ooh. all i they're just part of the town i guess yeah um but and, and they played like a big role too so i was like i should know who these people yeah. are but yeah. i just kind of don't 
Yeah. Um, but I, I will agree with you that there was, there was a lot of names that, that get thrown at you, uh, very quickly too. Like, like right from the beginning, you're given a lot of names that you have to keep track of. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I think I'd probably give it another try too. You know, sure. I would, I would love to as well. I haven't been feeling, feeling the best lately. So it's hard to like really dig into something, but yeah, you've been really sick this week. This, uh, yeah, because like I knew there were like every part that I would lock into of this book, like I've really thoroughly enjoyed so much. Yeah, like it was like really awesome and it grabbed me just like um the last book did. Yeah, but again, there's just times where I just don't know what's happening. I'm like, I'm I'm sorry, it's probably on me. I get that. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But physically, as a person, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I'm just saying, sure. I might be sure. slow. You know, that's fair. It's all good. <laughs> sure. I just couldn't follow. Sure, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, um, see, I love. I watch a lot of documentaries on lost civilizations, and so I think a really big part of the church beneath the roots that pulled me in was first of all, I'm Native American. I have Native oh, American cool. heritage. Cool. Yeah, I have awesome. percentage Native American genes. Um, and I found it very interesting to hear about how essentially these Native Americans were being forced out of their own religions Dude, and yes. identities and made to feel like they were in the wrong. And I just found that very interesting in general mm. of, you know, here are these like settlers, essentially, yeah. when you think right. about it from the Native American point of view, yep. coming in and telling you, no, your religion is wrong. You have to follow our religion. Yes, dude. That was, that was a very important part of the book to me. And it, yeah. it gave me a lot of answers in the sense of when I wonder about like, how do we have these lost civilizations and religions and whatnot? And reading this book finally put a picture in my head that i could understand of wow i can see how these people were pushed out of their lands and their religions and beliefs and that was very powerful to me it was astonishing did did you read did when you read the uh stolen tongues was there like an author's note at the end did you read that at all I don't think I did. Okay, because it he Felix Blackwell talks about being a a white man trying to portray Native Americans mm-hmm. and he said um he was like I did like extensive study like for this book and he's like mm-hmm. I he's like I talked to like dozens of native americans because he's like i wanted to make sure that i portrayed this really really well and he's like he's like whatever you're thinking like i promise you i like completely did my research for this book and took it very very seriously and i appreciated that so much um i uh i i i highly recommend reading the author's note or if it's not in the printed book it's definitely at the end of the audiobook and it's like really amazing to read like it's it's like really really good i usually like i'll i'll hear an author's note or read an author's note and i'll be like okay cool but there you go yeah the, a word on natives in fiction That's, yeah this this was, that was one impressive that yeah. he took the time he he went wow. like all out for it. Like he go in that note, he goes into detail the things that he did for for these books, and I just appreciate that so much. Um, I'm not Native American, but uh, something that people might not know about me is I'm like I'm like super 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 into Native American stuff. Like I Whoa. love it. Both of my sisters are Native American, and we've gone to like powwows and all sorts of stuff. Um, and Do you know what tribe they are? What's that? Do you know what tribe they are? Uh, no, I should know that, but I don't. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I love, I love the culture. Like anytime I've been to like, cause my mom, uh, is also obviously not native American and, and my sisters are adopted and my mom would take them to all these native American events. And I just like ate it up. Like I loved it so much. Um, and I think Oddly enough, my love of this, oops, sorry, 
my love of this started from uh, Assassin's Creed 3, where you play as a Native American Not during the best Assassin's Creed. Dude. dude, it is mine too. I love Hands it so down. much. Hands down. Um, and uh, and it's it's where you you play as a Native uh, yep. boy. Uh, right when the uh, English are coming over and like taking over the land and kind of moving. The... I mean, it was really, literally back when it started. <clears throat> yeah. And they're like moving natives out of their like land that they've had for millennia, like, you know, just forever. They want to kill it for oil or some yeah. sort of crap that they shouldn't do. Exactly. And uh, I remember playing that game for the first time, and I had never really thought about Native Americans to, like, any serious degree. I mean, I was, like, I don't know, 15 or something, 16. Um, and uh, I was, like, I was playing that game, and it just filled me with, like, just so much... Um, I don't want to say guilt, because I, I think people use that term kind of oddly, but it, it just felt me... It, it filled me with such a love for the native american people even though obviously assassin's creed isn't going to be the most accurate source of information when it comes to this stuff but it still like sparked that in me yeah. um and i i don't think anybody would uh really ever call me like an activist of any kind but that is something that has always been like close to my heart um, so to read these books and to hear that Felix Blackwell put so much effort into portraying this in a, in a very real way, mm -hmm. um, and then reading, especially cause you don't see it that much with the first book. There's like native American lore and stuff, but yeah. in, in church beneath the roots, you see firsthand these people who are like basically imprisoned up on this mountain like yeah. they are not they being allowed move. yeah they're like we want to move down the mountain so that we're not freezing up here and i won't go into spoilers but there there is a reason why they're up there um and it just just seeing that all all of that play out throughout this book i i loved it i loved it so much and i love just like all of the native american culture and yeah. there's like uh, for the people that haven't read it, there's a a pastor that has built a church up on this res, and he has kind of been sent there to be like a proxy or like kind of a guard like dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he's he's yeah. trying to convert the the native people, and he's also kind of in charge of this area. Like he's kind of the the gatekeeper that is keeping them from. Like, did did you understand this better than I did, Sam? Like, he's he's sent there by the government, kind of, right? He was working with the government. If, if none of them were involved, you know, and the Native American tribe had not been touched by outer influences, when all of these bad things started happening, they would have moved as a unit. Mm -hmm. And because the white settlers came in and said, no, first of all, your religion's wrong. You need to convert mm -hmm. to, I believe it was Catholicism. Yeah. yeah that, so and, and even, even Christian too. They, I yeah. know they talk about that in this book, Christian God yeah. or the yeah. Christian and God. The, the amount of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, government influence that was going on was very surprising to me. It was another thing that I really loved about this book because it it felt like it gave me the answers to why certain things have petered out in a sense over time. Yeah. And when yes. you look at the main character in The Church Beneath the Roots and how he's in this community where half of the community has been converted and half yeah. hasn't, but the half that hasn't is looked down on heavily by the yeah. other half that has. Yeah. As if, oh, poor you. You haven't figured out what the, right. the real God is or religion. Right. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, and then you also and have, and then, and then you also have like, uh, Onway is the main character and he's got this, this son, uh, T-Way. T -way, and, who's a main character in Stolen Tongues. Yes, and I didn't know that until way later. But 
I didn't because I, I had forgotten his name. I, I had forgotten the dude's name. And so then when I got to the end of the book, I was like, oh, my God, it's the guy. Um, but I uh, your text and I was like, dude, we're about to talk on the pod in five minutes. What are you doing? <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but the the interesting thing is you have Onway whose father was like heavily, heavily uh what's the right terminology? Like he was very native. Like he was very like yeah. And then you have his son who's like very, very not. And then Onway's kind of in the middle bridging the gap for the reader. And I, I thought that was a really cool choice to have this guy who's like, he's not as like zealous. I don't know if that's the right word as like his zeal, father, yeah. but mm -hmm. he's also not, he's also looking at these people converting to Christianity and he's like, what are you guys doing? Like, I, th I thought it was a very good introduction for the reader there. Yeah, you're following a character who has a father who was known as the like Native American standard, right? Not even standard, like leader, a, a leader, like the person you followed. Mm -hmm. And then you have a son who's living in a completely different time where they're being taken over essentially culturally that and you read in it how they are trying to wipe out the Native American culture. Yeah. It's not enough to say like, okay, you don't, you're not Christian. You don't believe in our beliefs. Like that's okay to each his own. Right. No. They They're like actively yeah. after you. Yeah. yeah. They want to they change everything over to that. I don't know right. about you. But I'm the type of person that if I was in that situation and you are just trying to bulldoze me or, over something, I am going to go so hard against you. Yeah, it, of course. It, yeah. yeah. Absolutely not. I am not going to back down. I will make it my last breath. Yep. Yeah. Yep. To prove yep. you wrong. Right. Yeah. There's a way to think about things. And the way that they did these things, was it effective? Yeah. It, sure. It, it seems like it, but was it the right thing to do? Absolutely not. Yeah. I, I have to admit, at the beginning of this book, I was kind of like, um, because you know for anybody that doesn't know i i i go to church i i'm i consider myself a christian obviously you guys know me and you know i'm probably not the stereotypical christian that you would typically think of <laughs> i am um, catholic too <laughs> for sure sense. I'm catholic too. <laughs> for sure but when you know when voth who's kind of the he's the priest or pastor or whatever and he he gets introduced and he's kind of the initial antagonist um and when i saw how he was treating the native people i was thinking to myself i'm like man i i really hope that the author isn't just trying to like bash christianity or like bash like church or or anything like that because it kind of seemed that way at first mm -hmm. um i'm like is he trying to like prove a point or whatever um but then as the story progressed, because for me personally, in my like seven years or so experience with the church, I've never met anybody who's anything like Voth. Um, and so I'm like, I hope people don't read this and think that that's just like what Christians and Catholics are like. Um, and then as the story progressed, I was really happy to see... You know, I, I don't really want to spoil anything, but it it shows a different side to all of that. It doesn't excuse anything that Voth did because he was like a very, very, very bad dude. Um, but there is there is a little bit of, of redemption near the end. And so I, I appreciated that uh, I a did little too. bit. I think he was honestly maybe my favorite plot line of, yeah. of this book. And I have always been a to each his own. Mm -hmm, we can same. agree to disagree and be totally fine type of person. And I've always had trouble understanding people who are like, no, you yeah. need to think the way I think. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I thought it was actually a really great plot point to put in the book to get yeah. you, you know, where we needed to go. Right. Well, awesome. We'll uh, we'll head into spoilers, guys. Uh, please read these books. Please read Stolen Tongues and uh, Church Beneath the Roots. Uh, do what Sam did. Um, read Stolen Tongues first, I would say, and then read yeah. Church Beneath the Roots. I I don't necessarily think that 
Church Beneath the Roots spoils anything for Stolen Tongues, but maybe as we get into spoilers, Sam will reveal that it, it does, because it's been a long time since I've read Stolen Tongues. I just um, don't know you would appreciate Church Beneath the Roots without having read Stolen I, Tongues. I, I think that's fair. They yeah. cross over. I, I still don't think you'd just be able to appreciate either plot line honestly i i would agree wholeheartedly yeah yeah i yeah. think i i think that the better way to read it is stolen tongues yeah. first yeah it reminded um, me of again paranormal activity i was like would i watch movie two before watching movie one no absolutely not i am going to read the first one <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm I'm so glad you did, and I I hope I hope that our viewers will check these out too, because I think that uh, especially Stolen Tongues um, is very like under uh, an underrated or underappreciated horror book, and I think that if you're looking for like genuinely good horror. Uh, check it out because I've I've read a lot of horror books and not very many of them have legitimately scared me until I read Stolen Tongues and it it scared the shit out of me, uh, which was very unusual for me at the time. <laughs> so well, for me to add to that, I mean, I don't really read a lot of horror. If anything, I read more thriller, mm -hmm. and I really went into this with like an f you guys. I hate you for making me do this, but you know my brain, and you kind of secretly knew that I was not just going to read the second book. I was going to read the <laughs> Um, And I didn't want to like it. And the first book really pulls you in immediately. It yes. is instant horror. There is no yeah. lull. There is no break. The first book is like bam, 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 bam. Over and yeah. over and over again. Yes. The second book for me was it's what slower. I needed personally. Yeah. I needed you to give me that, some may find boring, but detailed explanation in a way. Not the, yeah. the full explanation. Yeah, you definitely don't get everything for sure. But what led up to this? And yeah. for anyone listening, read book one and then read book two back to back. I, yeah. I highly suggest that from what I've like seen so far as the way to do it because I really think it it opens you up to a different view than having read book one forever ago and mm -hmm. now reading book two. I really do think it makes a difference. For sure. For sure. All right, guys. Well, we are going to go into full spoilers for both Stolen Tongues and Church Beneath the Roots. So at this point, if you have not uh, read those, then I would definitely stop this video or skip to the outro or final thoughts or whatever. Um, and, uh, and then you know, come back later and, and watch it because you really don't want to get spoiled on these books for sure. <clears throat> They're very good. And this is from someone who did not want to read these horror novels. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sam. So Stolen Tongues, spoiler thoughts. Okay. So I think like my major problem with Stolen Tongues and I loved Stolen Tongues. I yeah, remind until... me how it ended. Up until four fifths of the book was so satisfied. I loved it. I loved the build up. I loved, you know, the the little breadcrumbs that were thrown in every now and then. I think my major issue was, and again, I'm just gonna say this ahead of time, is all of these problems were solved with book two for me. Okay. They they all of my problems with book one were solved with book two. Was that they introduced the seller and we only heard like 30 yeah. seconds about it. I remember that. Yeah. And then it ends with stolen tongues with them figuring out. Oh my God. What was it now? Um, I, I just remember the way stolen tongues ended. I went, Oh, it didn't give me any answers. I was like, this hmm. gave me nothing. They're okay now. I, I guess like they see, I, I specifically remember them defeating it in some way um, yeah or, but I, or at least or at least hampering it in some way i i, do, I feel like i remember them winning in some sort yeah, of way whether they that definitely was won like or she, ha hampering of the demon or whatever they it was hampered it but yeah, they, they hampered didn't it. defeat it yeah so but i i think i think the main goal was just to get it out of his wife right Absolutely. was to 
And so I, I think he found a way that's to what, that do that. That was the that. whole basketball court thing, right? Like, didn't he, like, run into this basketball court and have it chase him? And they're, like, having a one-on-one -on -one battle in, in Stolen Tongues? I don't remember that. I don't remember yeah. that. Well, maybe not a basketball court, but I know that the husband and the demon, the Stolen Tongues demon, they get into a little battle one-on-one -on -one action. Hmm. <clears throat> I just remember, like, her sister showed up, and all this really weird stuff happened with her sister's baby, and I was like, yeah. Why did she yeah. come visit with her infant son after there's been these prophecies of, like, he will die, and she's the girl was vomiting up all of this black vomit that, like, stained everything and made it look like the creature was coming closer, and I just remember thinking throughout a lot of the book, like, I would have been out. I would have yeah, been out. Yeah, for sure, yeah. I would not have been here. Yeah, nope. the, the sister staying for as long as she did, I remember being like, what the fuck? Um, but I, I think that... Uh, I, for me, I, I, the cellar was definitely a thing that I was kind of like iffy about because they set up this whole cellar thing. And then I, I think I even asked Gabe in that episode, I was like did anything happen with the cellar? Because I, I don't remember anything happening with the cellar. They have, like, a weird vision. He has a weird vision. Felix has a weird... Er, Felix, right? Felix has a weird vision where he's in the cellar and it feels wrong and all of this, but then nothing comes of it. Mm. And then they talk about later how after everything is settled down, oh, yeah, the... the um. Park Trooper says, we went back, everything looked good, but he had mentioned how the wood was restacked over that cellar door yeah. that we knew about. And I'm like, all right, well, you still haven't told us what that fucking cellar was all about. Like, right. Which we sort of in this book, we got more understanding of what was in those jars in the cellar, but we didn't get like an answer. Oh, to tell it. me, tell me about that. Cause I don't remember. So we, there's towards the end of the church beneath the roots where the main character, T-Way's father, who's our main character, right? He has some vision and he sees Jennifer, who I don't know if you remember, Jennifer is the family that um, the girl in Stolen Tongue's family bought the cabin from. Faye's family oh. bought the cabin from. Okay, and if you remember in the first book in Stolen Tongue's, Felix reach tries to reach out to Jennifer and her husband. Yeah. Jennifer's husband has killed himself, but she remarried. Right. So he's like, let me reach out to them. He gets right. a hold of her second husband, who's like a dentist or something. Doesn't answer him right away, but gets back to him and like freaks out on him. And then finally leaves him a voicemail and says, I'm so sorry. This is something we dealt with. It was like really tough for me to even talk about this. I was so shocked. Like... My wife has been dead for this many years, blah, 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 blah. Right. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. So you see in Church Beneath the Stolen Roots, Jennifer goes into that basement, into that cellar that has been locked off, and she cuts off her hair. Huh. She's either the one who cuts off her hair or puts the blood in. There's two different people. I can't remember which one was which. And they one person puts their hair in the jar and another puts their blood in a jar, and that's what helps them walk through the portal that is beneath oh. the cabin. So is the whole is Black the entire rock. is the entire church beneath the roots underneath that cabin? I believe there's an entrance to get okay. there beneath the cabin. And okay. so the guy in why am I blanking on his name in Onway? church? Anway, he sees in a dream the people that have gone into that basement and put things in to the jars to then allow them to walk through what looks like a stone wall, but okay. it's not. He says yeah. once the blood and the hair went in the jar, this really weird pattern shows up on the door and it allowed them to walk through it. Right. And I was like, oh, they took like the direct route. To right. Help, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got like some of it and I was totally fine with that because stolen tongues gave us nothing. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I like, I like that connection. Yeah. Um, there was that connection. And then the, the T way connection probably hit me about halfway through the book before I realized because I read the first book and I listened to the second book. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh, Tiwe. I yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. he's the son that keeps getting mentioned in this book. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was like, now it all makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, I I didn't realize until the very until the epilogue because I, yeah. I didn't remember his name from the first book. Yeah, I didn't and matter of, until you said that text. Yeah, <laughs> and I was I was gonna ask you, Sam, because I was like, because I couldn't figure out for the longest time I couldn't figure out when Church Beneath the Roots was taking place because the description of the book just says a very long time before stolen tongues this book takes so it's like what does that mean is it hundreds of years is it a hundred years um and uh do we see do we see onway in stolen tongues because doesn't t-way take him felix to his dad no i don't think he takes him to his dad i think he says he wants to consult with the other elders of his community right and the only reason I immediately knew who Tiwe was is because I had physically read the first book yeah. and the way it is spelled, they gave you a phonetic oh. right next to it. So I was okay. like, oh, Tiwe. Okay. And for the next like 30, 40 pages, I kept saying Tiwe, Tiwe, Tiwe. Mm. Like that's how it's pronounced. So that's the only reason when I was listening to the second book that I immediately knew I was like, oh, Tiwe. <laughs> okay okay because cool. i had tried so hard to stick in my head the way it was pronounced versus the way it's printed right it's right. like t-w-y-w-y and you're like t-w-y-w-y what is, what is oh this mean? interesting yeah but okay. the first time they mention it in the written version they put in parentheses the way that it is phonetically sounded out right well so that I'm... was why when you sent us that text i'm like yeah what do you what do you mean <laughs> yeah we found that out like 200 pages ago <laughs> okay yeah that's fair that's fair but i um, thought it was great it's you know you're you're hearing the origin story and tway does say in stolen tongues there's not a lot of people who have this knowledge anymore it's right, yeah. not commonly passed around you know if my i think he says if my father was still here he would have known oh I oh yeah says, imagine if onway was there during stolen tongues that'd be such a different story well sort of he probably still wouldn't know exactly what to do but but the great crossover was the accidental sage knowledge that passed along to felix in yes stolen tongues. yeah because sage sage helped a little bit in stolen tongues right it wasn't like a cure-all but it, it wasn't helped, right? but it was like a deterrent and yeah. then you find out where that came from because when T-Way gives it to Felix, he says, I don't know, my father always said like this would work, you know? Yep. Right. And then you find out in Church Beneath the Roots that he accidentally sets the sage on fire and the being reacts so abysmally to it. And then you're yeah. like, whoa, that's how we got that in Stolen Tongues with the yeah. sage necklace. <laughs> nice. Did, did you notice any other big connections? The Jennifer Having... one was a big one. So yeah. when one of my big hangups in Stolen Tongues was if Faye's family had so many issues in this cabin, why would you ever gift them a weekend away in this cabin? Okay. Yeah. Did that get explained in this one? Yes. Okay. They explained that. After so long, they thought like everything would be okay. And it happened to Faye when she was younger being there, which by the way, I really hated that the whole thing with stolen tongues was that, oh, Faye's mother was pregnant and she lost the child. And so like family makes five and that's what the five was. Mm. I was so annoyed about that. Really? I, I was like, are you effing kidding me? This is <laughs> I was, oh, I, I kind of liked that twist. I okay. hated it. Spencer, I hated it. I was like, <laughs> this is the stupidest reasoning. Oh, her mom was pregnant and lost. I, I just, I was expecting so much more. And for that, to me, was like a letdown. Um, oh, okay. Interesting. But when we found out in Church Beneath the Roots, the backstory of how it had haunted the family that had owned the cabin before, I did find that interesting. But no, my big thing with Stolen Tongues was, 
why would you have ever sent your children there if you had these major issues yeah. when you were there? And they tried to explain it away as, you know, it was when she was a kid. We thought it was a bad nightmare. Like, we didn't think anything would happen. We would think, we thought it would be okay. But then but it gets revealed that there's more and more and more. But you haven't been there in 20 years, okay? And you right. thought to send your daughter and her fiance to this cabin of horrors that your husband had terrible nightmares about like his war buddies that had died gruesomely and you thought let me send my daughter and her fiance there like that's okay yeah yeah major major problems with the first book was i don't understand how we got to this place in the first place sure yeah i I would say i had a similar a similar thought yeah but so so did it explain did Church Beneath the Roots explain why Jennifer sold the cabin to them? They did not, but they told you that Jennifer was someone who knew the basement existed, went down there and cut off her hair and put it in one of the weird jars and then mm. walked through the doorway. And then she made it back out of hell? She had you up. Yeah. She had you up. Yeah, I'm so lost. She up with her, like, practical no husband or whatever. Mm. And then died later, but no, she she made it out somehow. But Felix, not Felix, Anway sees the vision, and he sees Jennifer and. So I want to say Jennifer is the one who puts the blood in, and there's another Native American that he sees putting his ponytail in because it was very okay. symbolic that a Native American would yeah. cut their ponytail off to put it in this jar, right? interesting okay yeah so it gave me like some context i was like oh, okay this is like a way station and you need right. to do something to get where you need to go right right so yeah. what do you guys think is the monster's like big plan like it like and that's something throughout these books where i've been like what is like does it just want to kill or is it like is I there like a big plan? Yeah, it kind of seems like survival. Yeah, you know, like do the next one to the next one to the next one. Yeah, I wanted to know more about the uh, about the black rocks. Like yeah, because that... that rock. I mean, like the first scene, and I'll probably be wrong, so correct me if I am. But the first scene that I remember is when they're on they're flying the plane, right? Yeah, it's the first scene. And, yeah, yeah, and the pilot's got really bad stomach pains, and then I think the passenger who is either I don't know somebody that we know uh, is like here. Yeah, I can, no, I can, I can take care of that for you. Let me, let me just take it out. Let me cut it out of you. And he's like, that's oh, the co-pilot. Be... Co-pilot. He's like, that'd be awesome, dude. Please cut it out of me, right? And it turns mm-hmm. into this terrible, insane bloodbath because of the yeah. stone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It reminded me of like, um, what's that? It was a manga, and then it was a show on Netflix, a uh, death book, death notebook. Death, death note. note. Yeah, death note. Yeah. Death note. Um. It reminded me of that in a way where it's something that just gets passed along. It doesn't mm-hmm. really go away. It mm-hmm. just finds the next victim to move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be interested to just get some more information on the beings themselves because I think you know what once you like know what the monster is and you know what it wants and stuff, it kind of becomes less scary, but I there's part of me that would still love to know like what exactly this thing is. Like, obviously it's a, it's like a skinwalker of some kind, but it's like, what is its goal? What is its like drive? Like be- besides just murder and, and chaos and stuff. Um, but it's a great monster. It's like what it's literally, I think really one of the only monsters in a book that has scared me. Cause I, I don't get scared by books like at all. Um, and another great one that does this is, um, the one by Ronald Malfi bone white. Uh, bone that, white, yeah. yeah, that has a fantastic, uh, kind of monster. That's just like kind of maneuvering and moving throughout everything. Yeah. And it's, it's just like terrifying, um, but in this one, the monster, it's so 
incorporeal and you don't really know what its rules are and you like think... a- anybody can be affected at any time and it just feels like it's it's everywhere and it's going to be right around every corner it's it's yeah. so good that's that's a cool thing i've found from like you know like every region has its own mythos right mm-hmm. uh, greek mythology norse mythology whatever and i find that like native american mythology is so like diverse and so mm-hmm. There's so much of it out there that's been believed for such a long time. And, yeah. you know, different uh, daemons, different stuff that could bad things that could be out there. And the reason why they're out there and how to fix that, it's like, it's probably like the biggest wealth of like, I don't know. I just, I would much rather read Indian mythology than I would like Norse mythology. Sure. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, Cause I feel like it's a lot more like true to where we are. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't live in Europe. Like I live where the right. Indians live. Like this is where they were before I was, you know, it's like, right. You know, we we came after, so like whatever yeah. they knew, what was going on was probably what was going on, right? Yeah, and, and, and a lot of it is terrifying. Like it's a scary. lot of a lot yeah. of their mythos yeah. are like fucking very, scary, very scary <laughs> dude, super scary. But yeah. at the same time, though, like when you like boil a mythos down, like whether that's the Skinwalker or whatever else, like it all just like it all boils down to one point of like somebody like not giving something to, you know, to the to God or to the mother, or whatever, right? Like right. It, mm-hmm. it all stems from one one bad deed done in a society where spirals yeah where it spirals you know viciously right like Mm -hmm. like they were all about like being very you know we we give this to you right Mm -hmm. and if you don't give this to this person then maybe something bad will happen yeah i think the thing that i remembered that i wanted to say before is that they mention at one point and i believe it was in stolen tongues i don't think it was in the church beneath the roots but i could be wrong is where they say this being has been here before yeah all of humanity right (laughs) to them (coughs) excuse me we are the food so how can you look at us hunting any animal for food differently than how this being looks at us and Mm. that was that was really powerful for me in a way uh as someone who has been semi-struggling with like being a vegetarian in the sense that like i really struggle with okay if i had to kill all of my meat that i eat i would not be able to do it i would not eat meat like that would be the end of it period Mm -hmm. um and i felt that was very powerful where this this supposed being has been here for eons before any man walked this earth and for you to walk around and kill a deer kill kill any animal for food but then be like oh this being is doing this to us it is just hypocritical kind of <laughs> yeah it, it is interesting to think about it's like the uh it's like the apex predator and it's just yeah. like hunting it's it's we've brain. always looked at this as like we're the apex but what if we're not the apex what predator? if we're not yeah now what it's if we're suddenly not? not okay for apex predators to take out lesser beings right i loved it it made it it made me really think on everything i right i thought that was a really great pro- plot point yeah yeah it's a it's an it's an excellent uh it's an excellent um villain i don't even know if that's the right word but it is uh it's very scary and it's very um just frightening in every way i remember i read stolen tongues when i was working it was last winter uh around this time and i was working out at a cabin that was like an hour and a half outside of town and i was there every night it would get dark very early i was the only one like you have to go down like this long windy road that goes through the woods and it's just this one cabin that's way out in the middle of nowhere and i would work there until like sometimes six or seven at night because we just needed to get the project done um and i was the only only person going out there and i was listening to stolen tongues and it just freaked me out because I was like, man, I'm in the exact situation uh, that these guys would would be found in. Um, but Sam, I'm so glad that you did the audiobook for the second one because the voice of the creature is so scary. The audiobook narrator does such a good job 
with well, the voice. Well, and you're talking about at the end with the do re mi sa to thing means, which Did was we? really yes. What was so it? Very, very end at the Church of Roots, they are doing a how would you say like a um, was it the funeral? The funeral. That's what yeah. I was trying to say. At the funeral. And they start singing at the that's funeral. That's right. To send the bodies off to the afterworld. That's and you right. find out that what they say as Native Americans to send these bodies off to the afterworld is solely tough. <clears throat> yes. And that for me was, I was like, whoa, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's yeah. good. That's good. It was a very, like, the last five minutes of the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. found it out. Right. Yeah, I didn't even I think like, about oh connecting the two things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, before, before we wrap up, we've talked about a lot of this. Um, I just want to mention the scene with the dog. Yeah. Oh, my Definitely. God. This was that was fucking by, by far terrifying. My most, my most terrifying, but also most important to me scene of this whole entire book. We are all dog lovers, major yeah. dog lovers. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it was so brutal because there there's a scene that happens earlier before that one, where the dog, where Luke Luke hits the dog with the gun, and you think that he's gonna shoot it, and then what? Somebody intervenes, and Luke goes down. And the dog is safe. Um, and it was like, for a moment, I was like, okay, they're not going to kill the dog in the book. That's good. Like, they're not, they're, the dog is fine. The dog is going to live. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then we get like a couple chapters later and the dog gets hurt. <laughs> and then it's like infected with this yeah, it gets, like, it, monster. It, it gets cut, cut by one of the stones, dude. Yeah. And it's just like, oh my God god and it was just <clears throat> horrifying watching this thing yeah then, the whole sequence of of what's his name in the cabin with this dog was just terrifying really scary yeah and he he like wakes up in the middle of the night and like looks at the dog and the its eyes are empty and there's well, like yeah. maggots in it and then he like but, turns the light on and the eyes are fine like yeah oh. the first before he goes to sleep the first time though like he sees what's going on with the dog and he sees that the dog's getting irate and the eyes are changing color and bulging and this and that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he finally like gets himself to calm down. He goes to sleep and he wakes up and he, and he hears something coming up, up the stairs and running back down the stairs. Right. Yes. And, yeah. And he's like, what is that? My, I'm pretty sure my dog's dead. And it was like, my dog was sick. It was going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then he sees the dog again, where it's like in werewolf, you know, form, right? Like mm -hmm. where it's just completely split apart and all messed up. Like, geez, yeah. Dude, that sucks. Yeah. That was terrifying. And then and then the like later when he he's like buried Numi and the monster has gone out there and dug up the body, like, oh, that was brutal. Uh, even and even the scene after he after he buried Numi, he talks to his son, right? On the phone. And his son is like, like, Dad, what's going on? Like, what's wrong? And he's like, you know, Numi's gone. I had to you know, I had to put her down. And he's like, well, let me send Zeus out there. Like, I'll send Zeus to you. Because Zeus yeah, was the like, other dog. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 son. No, we can't. We can't do that. And it just broke my heart. I was like, dang, yeah. dude, that's, that's so sad. I know. Yeah, that that was brutal. But it kind of leads... It, it leads Voth to come over yeah. and talk to him and be like, I know what it feels like to lose a yep. dog. And, like, they yep. kind of... They have, like, this minor reconciliation... And then later you get all these reveals from Voth that like he's the reason why they weren't uh, allowed to like move down the mountain, like because he wanted his church job at the top of the mountain, uh, which was a really good reveal. Um, and then also he didn't allow the FBI to get involved with looking for Akantha mm -hmm. and all that. And I was like, ooh, that's really interesting because for a period of time, it was almost like Voth had kind of like won me over a little bit. It's like, okay, he's oh, going to have yeah. a redemption arc. And then you find out all this other stuff and Anway lose it on him. And then. But then he wins you back. He wins you back where he like essentially holds back 
you know, the bad thing to yeah. let him have time to get out. And so I went, I'm, when he says the thing, I think he says, what is, what does he say at the end? And he's like, this is my redemption. Like, this mm-hmm. is what I can do to redeem myself. I was like, right. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. I, I like that he had a redemption arc and I think yes. he, he was like a very good character in general. Like even as a villain, like he was, he was like a very, very good villain. He was very well written. He had he believed many what he layers. Was saying, you yep. know, up until that point, and then he was willing to admit that he was wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of complexity to him. He wasn't just like a bad guy for bad mm-hmm. guy's sake. Like there were there was a lot of depth to him. He took and, his punishment. He admitted yeah. his faults. I appreciated that. Yeah, and and I even liked how Onway, being kind of the reverse of him, also had a lot of complexity. Where even at the end, like he didn't have hate for like the Christian folks. Like he, like he was even saying like Christian prayers by the end of it. And he said it again at the end, and everyone looked at him like he was crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. And so it was kind of cool to see to see these two extremes kind of meet somewhere generally in the middle. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Voth at the end, I loved, I loved the reveal where they're like, yeah, you can move back down the mountain now. And always like, why are you letting us do this now? Yeah. And they're like, well, Voth <laughs> sent this letter that is like, he requested that you guys be moved down the mountain. And I'm like, Oh, that's really, really good. Um, yeah, I I just think I think he was just like a great, just a great great character. Um, by the way, do, I know it's kind of random, but do you know? Do you remember from Stolen Tongues if T Way was married? Well, here's okay. So they say in the Church Beneath the Roots that um, T Way's father had a very bad addiction problem at one point. It's very mm-hmm. prominent throughout the book where right. every time he wants to go relapse, he is saved. Right. So you find out who T Way and his mother are through that, but they have the mother had left him because of the father on Way's addiction issues. Mm-hmm. So you, we but don't T-way's know. Is living with his mother, right? T-way, and how he ends up having Nathan. We don't get any of that. Right. Oh, okay. So in so wait, in Stolen Tongues, T Way's wife left him? No, no, no. In Church Beneath the Roots. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anway's wife, yeah, yeah. who is T Way's mother, left him. And that's but, all we find out. Okay, but what about in Stolen Tongues? Does it ever mention that T Way has a wife or anything? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, because I, I, so. I was curious if it was like Angela or whatever his his little girlfriend in this book. No, was. I I would remember that. And there's definitely that nothing stuck out in that familial tree. Okay. Um, I did like Angela in this book. I thought she was great. I thought she was a great uh, secondary character to to T Way. Um, I thought it was great that you found out that. Hanway had a brother he didn't know about and stuff yes, like that. Yes, that was a great reveal that Akantha was uh, was his brother and Moya had had an affair with Anway's dad. Yeah. And then the priest had blackmailed no, Anway's exactly. dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. Um, Yeah, real quick before we wrap up the... Uh, just the whole ending segment where they actually go down to the church. Like that was so wild. Like I would not have assumed from stolen tongues that there was like this big underworld thing. Like that's pretty crazy. I feel like I was waiting for it. I needed like, I I needed to know. And when they talk about in stolen tongues, how, with the Native Americans, it wasn't about like a religion as a whole. It was religion of the land where you lived. That, yeah. that really spoke to me. It was like, no, it's not just like blanket religion. It's yeah. here is where we were and here is what we dealt with. And that's yeah. how we dealt with it. And right. I, I loved that. Yeah, for sure. And is that is that kind of the connection, the connective tissue that you needed from oh, stolen yeah. tongues. 
Yes. Yes. I needed this prequel. I needed it because I loved book one up until the end. And then I was like, what the fuck? I was like, you did not give me, you did not give me enough. And this was prequel it just, gave was me- it just a lacking, was it a lacking of information about the monster that you felt was missing or I felt like it ended and it was like, okay, I have no information on the monster, where this came from, why it happened to them. It, I felt at the end of the book that I had no answers. Mm. Okay. And it really pissed me off. I really this morning did not want to listen to Jane <laughs> the Roots because I was so goddamn annoyed. And I was like, Sam, this is gonna give you the answers. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. And it did. Interesting. It, it it fulfilled every question that I needed answered personally. Yeah. That's that's so funny because I I'd have to go back and watch our episode or something because I I distinctly feel like I was very satisfied with the ending of Stolen Tongues. That's funny. Well, if nobody else has any spoilery thoughts, um, let's go into uh, kind of final thoughts here. Do you guys think we get another book? I don't think we need it. After this, I don't think we need it. I think this was personally what I needed, and mm-hmm. it gave me everything I needed, and I am good with walking away from it. Yeah, I, th- I think that's fair from Sam's perspective. I don't know if it would be cool to get maybe something that is uh, similar but later on, or <laughs> even like kind of yeah. more interim to the oh the yeah. church beneath the roots, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I wish I would have grasped you know, onto it better than I did because I really want to like it and I really want to enjoy it. Um, so it's kind of tough to say like, Hey, I don't know where you'd need to come in to make the awesome thing for me, but uh, I'm sure there's a time that that will happen. Yeah. Did, did you feel like we got all the answers from, from this book, Gabe? From the Beneath the Roots? Roots, Yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't. I I feel like there's a couple of reveals where I was like, Oh, okay. Now that makes sense. That's it. Hmm. I, I feel got. like we got the reveals we needed, but we didn't get like the like the only reveal that I that off. I saw that was like oh my god this makes sense is when he calls him the stolen tongues like Luke calls him the <laughs> stolen tongues I was like <laughs> makes sense right for that thing we're about to read later but now other than that I didn't I didn't really understand like I I guess I got the I got the lore side of it but I was like for a, for a story side or story position I was like I don't know it's... it was just another story set however many years before yeah we didn't yeah get, even though we got to go down into the cave and we yeah. saw everything we saw we didn't get answers we absolutely yeah and i, I think not get answers i i think that's kind of where it leaves me is like i think i think another book would be great um they would where well so where would you want this this third book to be though because that's the prequel, prequel. they got the story prequel yeah the it's like that that's the question is like yeah. do you do you do a prequel to the prequel or do you go after felix and Faye? Mm-hmm. and i think at this point you'd have to go after felix and Faye because yeah. like i want to see i want to see the monster defeated 100 percent, or at least like defeated and then maybe at the end of it like but maybe it's still or, out yeah there. not only that you want, to, you want to see the people like get to the point where they can defeat the monster right like I, where I they wanna... know they're gonna win like yeah, listen I... we have it by the by the teeth here we yeah know, we know what to do let's do it i i want to figure out i want to figure out how the monster is defeated yeah, like i want to yeah. know the mechanics of how you get rid of this thing and maybe you don't, maybe you just like contain it forever. Mm-hmm. Like you find yep. a way to like contain it. Um, but cause, cause if I remember correctly and people may correct me in the comments, but if I remember correctly in stolen tongues, he doesn't defeat it, but he gets it out of his wife. And that's yeah. kind yeah. of the goal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would love to see somebody else take on, this being the skinwalker whatever and really figure out what to, to do for, with for it yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah because I don't um, care about that. 
Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm very much like looking at this in the paranormal activity sense of, I don't care. I just want to mm. know what started it. I don't care about what oh, okay. did it. I just, I need to get to the root of how yeah. this all started. <laughs> okay. That's all I and, hear about. And you, and you pretty much got that in this book, you feel like. Yeah. 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 Except, I don't know. I, if they were to do another, if he was to do another book, I would want him to go back further to where this all started. Even if it's during the time where our earth is wild and there's no humans mm. and I, personally, that's what I'm interested in. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't okay. care if Felix and Faye defeated at this point. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what happens from the start. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I need to know how this all began. Yeah, what was yeah. the catalyst? Like that's, that's all I care I like about that. at this point. Yep. I like yeah. I like the beginnings. I I think I think yeah. it's an it's enough for me to know that it was like something that was like millennia ago. These are like ancient beings that do this because that's just what they've always done. No, no. Give for me, me for uh, yeah, for those me. ancient beings that have done it for millennia though are so powerful that you you can't beat them, dude. Yeah. How they get so here? Why are they doing it? Why do they? They're just it? so good at it. They've been doing it forever. You gotta find that. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. Um. Yeah. I think. I think for me, like, I just, I want to see, I want to see the end to the story. But also, I feel, you know, just as, you know, okay with it just kind of ending here and Felix Blackwell going on to something else. Yeah. Um. And I think at this point it's safe to say that I, I will jump on whatever book he puts out next, uh, regardless, because he's proven to be well researched and to be, to like really think about you know his stories and um, the connective tissue it seems and whatnot. So he just uh, didn't write a story. He took the time to research and give you real background as opposed to just some fabricated like oh this is why this happened yeah and whatnot and i mean i will tell you straight up i went into these books like fuck i don't want to read this i don't want to <laughs> read more. i don't want to do it I, I i need the visual aspect i've told you guys before how I need a base to look at. Like I cannot come up with things on my own. It's very hard for me to visualize things without a, a thing to look at first and then go off of. I yeah. loved these books. I loved it. Yeah. I, Cause you, you didn't really need to visualize that much with these no. books. It was kind of an incorporeal. Yeah. Being. And it wasn't a slog. It, it The first book stolen tongues was bam, 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 with like all of this like crazy stuff going on. And uh -huh. for me personally, I enjoy a follow-up that gives me the explanation that I felt I was missing in book one. And that may yeah. not be for everyone, you know? Right. Like, I can understand how people would find book two kind of boring and pointless and there's too many characters and whatnot. But for me personally, <laughs> <laughs> It was exactly what I was looking for. I'm so glad. Really I'm so glad you had a good time you. with it. <laughs> you no, know, really, thank you because this is these are books I would have never picked up on my own. Mm -hmm. And you can ask my husband. I, I said to him last night. I looked at him. I go, I didn't want to read a horror book. Yeah, I didn't want to read this. I go, I want to watch <laughs> something. I didn't want to read this. I go, I just blew through this fucking book. I go, it was amazing, and yeah. especially. This is a prejudice that I'm sure many people struggle with, where when you pick up a self-published book, you're like, eh. you know, I'm only... Was this self-published? The way that they're printed, I would assume they're self-published. Huh. Is there no nothing on the spine denoting nothing. a publishing nothing. house? interesting and okay. so when i went to order them i'm like oh god these are self-published like okay like all right huh. it is it is phenomenal but Sam, we're we're gonna get you super into self-published books because we've read some 10 out of 10 self that blows some trad pub stuff mm -hmm. out of the water 
Mm-hmm. I am not like an immediately, oh, it's self published. I'm not going to read it. Like, absolutely uh, not. Like, I read Zodiac Academy way before it is now becoming this big thing and it's not going to be self published anymore. This big publisher is picking it up and whatnot. I have no problem with that. Also, the idea that my self published versions are going to be worth hundreds of dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it. But it, it is a terribly self imposed mental thought where I'm like, oh, it's self published. Uh, sure, sure. You know what I mean? Like, your yeah, initial a, reaction is a knee jerk reaction. But I don't let that stop myself from reading sure. anything that's self published. I fucking love these books. I fucking love these books. And that's a lot for me to say where at the same time I could say, I don't want to read anymore. Mm -hmm. I I don't, but I loved these books. I (laughs) love And I am very grateful for you guys for having me read them because they were amazing. That's so good because they're probably like, by far the best horror that we've read the only yeah. other one that i would recommend to you is really anything written by ronald malfi but especially bone white bone bone, bone white was like this level of good like it was okay. it was very very good um i i think i think you would like bone white a lot bone white okay yeah but okay, so with that, we are going to wrap the podcast up there. Um, I'm going to try to get this edited and sent out to you guys as soon as I can so that you get it before Halloween. Um, but uh, thank you, Gabe and Sam, for hanging out today and talking about some stolen tongues. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, you are very welcome, Spencer. You're, very You're welcome. welcome, Spencer. You're very welcome. <laughs> glad to have you. I'm glad you appreciative of us. <laughs> it. No, it's right. I. I just love. I love those episodes where it's like we're all talking about something that we just like super enjoy. Yeah. So it's it's awesome. You like- I super yep. fucking every these bugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every yeah, Halloween episode we've done, I feel like since we've done this, which is only a handful of them, you know, three or four, or five, probably four max, I guess. This will uh, be the fourth been, one. Yeah, this will be the fourth. Yeah, so three and four, uh, but they've always been super fun, dude. Yeah, it's always like the you know end of the year top five discussion. This always plays into that, right? What's your horror book of the year or horror, right. whatever else? So I always yeah. enjoy it. Cool. Yeah, or even if we can figure out, I know this is like a totally very far in the future, but if possible, like I would love to come out and see you guys. Like if we yes. could like do that, like a meetup. Yeah, you should. Like, you should. Do it. Be I would be so down to come out to see you guys. Yeah, you let's should. We should. That would be awesome. Gabe's wedding. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. so yeah. I'll be your date. I'll be your yeah, date. That's probably that's probably not for not for a little while yet, but yeah, it's, it's gonna happen some point (laughs) all right guys well we are going to wrap it up there thank you so much for hanging out with us and i hope you guys have a fantastic halloween seriously let us know down in the comments what you're doing for halloween um or if you're staying in and reading a book let us know what horror book or whatever spooktober kind of thing that you're doing for the halloween fall season um but yeah we will see you next with I'll be honest. I don't know what's next. Iron Probably, flame. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So It'll Iron, be great, Iron guys. Flame, be awesome. I, Iron Flame will be a live stream this weekend, the same week that you're seeing this episode. We will have a live stream on Saturday, guys. You want to do Saturday? Saturday? Yeah, Saturday or Sunday. Okay, uh, we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, we'll have to figure it out because I, yeah, we'll have to figure it okay. out. Okay. I will post it in the community tab on our page and you'll be able to see when we have our upcoming stream, but it'll be this weekend. So join us uh, to get super drunk with us and talk about um, another cringy, awful book. Uh, But with that, guys, all of our links are down in the description. Uh, You can follow us on Twitter or our discords down there, or if you want to support us on Patreon and talk to us uh, live as we do the show, just like Spacey Nova does all the time, uh, and Shad Zaman and all these other people who are fantastic patrons, you can join us there and, and hang out with us live and get special perks, get episodes early, all that stuff. But with that, guys, thank you so much for hanging out, and we will see you next time on the Fantasy Files podcast. Have a great Halloween, everybody. Bye-bye. 
I am a banana. And a big shout out to Caitlin. Thank you so much for backing us at the Greenbone tier.